Hey, this is Elliot. This is Scotty. This is Sam. We're from the Rubens, and you're listening to Triple M's Homegrown with Matty O. If it's Aussie and it rocks, it's right here. This is Triple M's Homegrown with Matty O. Yeah, it's right around the country on the Triple M Network. That is 49 stations and on the listener app. This is a treat. One of the first bands we ever had on the show. One of the biggest bands into the cu- in the country, I should say. From Camden to the world. We're talking gold, platinum, number one albums. Arias, they've done it all. You know who I'm talking about. Tracks like My Gun, you know. Things won't make it matter. Got good things. Got you. Hoops. Hallelujah. Selling out tours everywhere they go. Consistently good songwriters. We're loving good mood. And their latest offering doesn't disappoint. Fresh off a very weird gig for Triple M in Melbourne. <laughs> I welcome uh, Sam Elliott Scott from the Rubens. Lads, welcome to Triple M's yeah, Homegrown. Good, good to see you. you. Good to be back. Uh, that was a weird gig. We should describe what that was because, like, radio stations do, like, corporate kind of functions and, yeah. and things that bands play. But I, was, I walked in, I saw the stage. Have you ever played as close to a bar? Is that before? I think we should always play that close to a bar. <laughs> yeah. It was quite nice. Sam could have reached across and just, yeah, taken a shot or a beer or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, like, those corporate things, they're, they, they can be weird, but I think, like, the key is just to break the ice. You know, the audience... Yeah, it was good like, if, if you're in a little tiny, like, space and everyone's kind of there in a, in a corporate situation, they're kind of uncomfortable as well because, like, this isn't a normal gig, so as quickly yeah. as you possibly can, you should just... Acknowledge yeah. how weird it is yeah, for everyone, well, and then move well. on and have fun together. And I think like it's hard to like you misinterpret it sometimes because like as you guys were literally walking through before, and everyone at the gig they're just like, oh my god, we can't wait to see the Rubens. But when you go to play, they're just standing there stiff, like with no emotion because it's like a weird kind of vibe, right? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah. You got to get them going, but we're not also expecting like them to be jumping around and like screaming. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. We're, we, our expectations were set, and yeah. all we wanted to do was just play three <laughs> songs really well, and then you know. Yeah, go and meet the people afterwards. It was it was fun. It was good. Are there any weird like kind of gigs like that that spring to mind as like the weirdest one of those that you've done? Oh, There's some weird know. ones in America sometimes. Oh, some really? weird ones. They yeah, have no idea who we are. Yeah, and you're kind of just propped up as hey, here's the Australians and clapping. Yeah. We've done like competitions Speak. as well where we played in like someone's backyard. Oh, in, cool. Close to Newey, yeah. which was a funny one, and we we played the gig for like some friends and family. Like it was some kind of promotion thing we did played the gig for their friends and family and then went and met like they had like um they were breeding, like, puppies. Little, they were breeding puppies yeah, and they, they named, named them some, all of us they named some of the puppies after us that was a strange gig <laughs> <laughs> it was so odd I think Elliot might have been the runt of the litter and, yeah. <laughs> what about um I'm asking bands this I'm getting some good stories please go to 11 Frank 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 What's your most spinal tap moment on stage? Oh, we have them, we have them all the time. Yeah. I mean, like we reference it all the time. Like if we're playing, like we just recently did a tour. Like we do a lot of regional touring, and we end up in pubs and RSLs and places that generally don't have bands or the infrastructure for bands. So yeah. we all, often find ourselves like trying to walk through, you know, fully functioning kitchens, <laughs> trying to get yeah. the stage and doing that whole rock and roll, yeah, rock and roll, roll, rock and roll, turn around, yeah. <laughs> Uh, last time I saw you guys was in celebration of, of you, incredible cover as we celebrated 50 years of Mushroom. And I saw you guys at the concert. That was a really, really good show, guys. Talk about strange gigs as well. Like, have mm-hmm. you ever been somewhere apart from a festival where there have been so many massive Australian acts and such a quick turnover yeah, quick at turnover that concert? Back to back, like there's ten drum, more than 10 drum kids yeah. back. You know, it's crazy with the Lazy Susan you know, stage was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. It was unbelievable, honestly. The yeah. operations were we crazy. Starter. Yeah. I yeah. reckon mm-hmm. there was some very stressed people there. Yeah, yeah. totally. That was like it was a feat of like um just just showing what the Australian production industry can do, like crews in general, like mm. all the all the people backstage, there was hundreds of people, like Scotty mm. said, like probably like twenty different drum kits back there. And it yeah. was like I sat there with a beer and watched them like work backstage. Yeah, it was yeah. impressive. It was like watching like ballet. Yeah. Like crew ballet. Mm. Yeah. And then you speed it up. Up, you speed it up and you put Benny Hill music over the top of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys but, go for a beer afterwards of that? I, I went for a beer. I was like, everywhere I looked, I'm like, man, I'm just 
people like famous I got to meet some really cool, like yeah just talking to some you know just getting introduced to some old dudes and then afterwards walking away and then someone whispering in my ear that was blah 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 or so and so and it's like realizing that like we were surrounded by people that have mm. like influenced the industry and the music we make yeah um it was just like yeah you, you i don't think australia has ever had a an event with that many amazing old school artists as well yeah yeah it was special. very special yeah mm. celebrating michael as well yeah. i know how close you guys were and you know i think it was a conversation one of you guys told me about a phone call when you're in New York and maybe he was back here about, you know, wanting to get played yeah. on commercial radio and things like that. It's Yeah. That was my, that was my phone call with him. I think like I, I was kind of representing that, you know, the boys, like, course, yeah. our interest. Um, and you know, obviously we really wanted to be on triple J like every band, yeah. you know, did at, at the time. And, um, but we also had sort of aspirations to become, uh, you know, known across the board in Australia and, I think that was kind of refreshing for Michael when, when we had that phone call. We yeah. were trying to decide which label to go with and mm-hmm. he gave me a call and we're in the studio and I said, we want to be on commercial radio. We, we don't just want to be that indie band. We want to be yeah, everywhere. And he, I think for him, that in hindsight, I get why he was kind of excited about that because it was quite unusual for bands, indie yeah. bands back then to actually want to be on commercial radio. It was kind of back yeah. then when it was a dirty word and like yeah. it was back in the, the era where brand deals were, were dirty and, you know, mm. making money was bad yeah. you know yeah and now it's completely flipped right it's great it's because yeah. pe- people i think i think the public have come to understand that you know it's really hard to be an artist and yeah. to make a living and mm-hmm. people yeah. have come to accept the fact that if you do a mcdonald's yeah, well you know commercial then that's great because it means you can afford to keep well making said. music i think gedinski would have seen like the hunger as well that's in that ambition of like a young band wanting to yeah. climb to the top and him being like all right that's a challenge for me yeah. and i can deliver on that as well and it's probably pretty rare as well like bands want to be kind of popular but they kind of don't know how. I think like mm. you guys going, hey, this is the way we want to do it. This is where we see ourselves. It, it helps, you know, having a blueprint mm. for him to be like, okay, cool. I know exactly what these guys want. Yeah. Mm. And it's not hemming in, you know, the team of people who are going to try and help us do something that we have no idea how to do. Just saying yeah. like, hey, we're open to everything. Let you guys just go do your thing and like, we'll just make music yeah. and let's just try we and make as many people yeah. as possible to hear it. Like yeah. that's, that's simple. Yeah. I'd like to touch on that. Like making music. I feel like you guys are so consistent. Like there's no real breaks. Like we're always getting new music from you guys, which is really super cool. Like. Can you tell us a bit about your recording space? I feel like there's a lot of mystery around it. Like we see yeah. photos and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, can you paint the picture for us? Well, yeah, we've spoken before about the bunker, as it's called, um, an ex World War II bunker that never saw World War II. It's in Camden, uh, New South Wales, yeah. by the airport. Um, probably shouldn't give too much away because people <laughs> will find it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but Will, our bassist, um, is heavily into music nerd um, and is a music engineer as well. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Um, we didn't start out recording there when yep. we first started the band, but eventually he took over that place, um, nice. just renting it out and turned it into a studio. It was just a, an empty hole in the ground, an empty cavern. Um, but he's turned it into a studio now where we can rehearse and also record, Ugh. um, which is probably honestly, like we take it for granted now, but that would be why mm. we're able to consistently put out music yeah. because we don't have to, you know, book proper studio time and exactly. and and exactly yeah exactly we can just walk in there and and record whatever songs we have ready to go kind of thing it's kind of like yeah. a well oiled machine yeah where are you guys all living i'm in wollongong sam's in thrall yeah cool. scotty's in i'm camden. in camden with will yeah yeah sweet. the golden triangle yeah yeah yeah, yeah. zach's in melbourne zach's sometimes in melbourne. sydney we're everywhere which we're, we're trying to get away from each other <laughs> <that> you would <laughs> see him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah how's the group spread go with voice memos and things like that is, is that something that's always happening i suppose because you're not all in the same place but... you mean with like music writing yeah. and stuff like uh we don't really do the voice memo stuff we're too shy to send some yeah but like now and again when we're drunk we'll show each other voice memos of like a song <laughs> like we might like elliot might write it write and produce an amazing song yeah and then we go and make it ourselves and make it cool and then like down the line Elliot might show us the original voice memo which is always really funny <laughs> very um, embarrassing but yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah, not yeah. sharing that stuff we try and no. we try and make our demos as good as possible individually and yeah. then once we feel like they're ready we share share them we're kind of yeah, we're awesome. private songwriters yeah well I love what you're also doing as well you're doing a lot of regional touring falls down. Uh, the Good Mood Tour, that's really cool, man. 16 shows, you guys nearly, nearly uh, 5,000 Ks, nearly. That's pretty exciting, man. Extensive. How do you guys go, like, performing regionally? It's a lot of fun, right? I reckon it's our jam. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's our bread and butter. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you go to these places, they, you know, they, they're not really getting much music there. So they they just really appreciate you. Yeah, so exactly. It's, it's an easy win for us. We mm. staying in any pubs? Um, yeah. yeah, a few pubs. Oh. Stayed out the back of a Maria. couple pubs, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, like it's f- it's just fun because you know we've been doing it for a while as well, and we've that was always 
the the appeal of being in a band. I think for all of us in the band was playing shows and traveling and seeing new places and stuff. So to be yeah. able to go to somewhere like Lake Tires where we've never been before and play two shows and get to know this weird cool. tiny yeah. town and and just kind of have fun and then move on to the next place is yeah. is like a real um we don't take it for granted for sure. It's and cool. I think I think it's like, you know, if any bands are listening to this who are up and coming invest in doing this kind of touring because it's yeah. not just like you're, you are doing a service to the communities that don't get music but you're also going to do yourself a good service because mm, if yeah. you can build a you know a fan base mm. out in these places there's thousands and thousands of people out there in mm. australia they're outside of the capital cities we did ten thousand tickets in january and didn't go to a capital city like it's 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 an amazing Whoa. business model as well <laughs> and we have the best time ever it was essentially a summer yeah. holiday just going to beach towns and playing shows every night yeah. <laughs> but like it's also just like a good yeah. thing you know a good thing aspirationally for bands who are coming up in australia because that's what they used to do like midnight oil and stuff back in the 90s and 80s every single australian band back then they used to do the whole regional yeah. run yeah and it kind of died off and now it's good because like we see all like our sort of the other bands that we're friends with in Australia who are, you know, are, are touring bands, they're doing the same thing. And mm. it's sort of a revival of like Australian in, uh, uh, touring like that. So yeah. I, think it's, I think it's really worthwhile. And it's cool for like your fans who have been watching you guys for years to be able to go to these shows and play new music as well. Like it, that adds that, you know, rather than going to these places and playing the same set you've been playing for four or five years, you mm. know, and like that's, that's it, special yeah. for you and special for them too. Yeah. We just, yeah. I, I think like it's, Every time we release a song, we can just pick a state or a territory and yeah. just go and do like 12 shows yeah, and cool. just promote that one song and just like play something new. And so mm. it's just like, it doesn't stop. It doesn't have to stop for us. Yeah, cool, man. Let's talk about this. So um, how did you get the ticket to go to Brazil? <laughs> how did this work? Can you paint the picture about the video clip to this song? It's rigged. Well? <laughs> what the hell? How did this work when well, I saw I mean, it? I, I, I'll try and make it quick, but I guess like 12 years into our career, we've been doing music videos and the way that it usually goes is yeah. here's the budget. Let's talk to a director. Mm -hmm. Let's go to a set or whatever and let's get, hire a bunch of people and make a video yeah. in the traditional sense and put it up on YouTube and hopefully people watch it. Um, we've done a lot of that and I think this time we were trying to think of a way to engage with our fans and make them kind of part of the process. So yeah, like we reversed it a little bit and just sort of got them involved from the get-go and said, oh. Sam's going to go somewhere in the world. Um, you know, just vote in the comment section, say where you should go. The top three places came up. One was, I think, Scotland. One was Brazil and Antarctica because they were trying to... <laughs> yeah, like, the stuff like, it did. Yeah. yeah, into the snow. Um, like, how can we send this band broke? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> broken cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that happened. And then I picked the, the, the name out of the hat and it was Brazil. Um, and the reason it was me was because... I'm the front man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't argue with it. Yeah, damn it. Yeah, yeah. but I, like I was kind of surprised because I was I was nervous but excited and I knew how lucky I was to be doing this. But yeah, sure. I was surprised at like Elliot Scotty here sitting with me and the rest of the boys like. They were really proud of me for doing it, but I'm secretly yeah. in the back of my mind going, I get a free trip to Rio. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, we're proud of him because it's like our nightmare to have to like, yeah. what he had to do, he didn't just go on holiday, he had to film himself the whole time and mime, yeah. al and mime make... along to this song <laughs> in public in front of like, in front of people that don't like know what's going on. Yeah. He's in the middle of Rio. Who is this psycho from <laughs> yeah. Australia? He had to become yeah. like a, a YouTuber pretty much for yeah. a week. Yeah. I was a vlogger. A vlogger, yeah. yeah I was which paying is off security not... <laughs> guards to get on top of buildings to get away from the public so I could do stuff. Like, yeah. it, it was wild. But I, I think the other, like, a, a good thing about it was that I didn't have to do it in Sydney. So yeah. if I yeah, did it in Sydney, no one knew. people are probably at some point going to go, that's the dude from the room. Yeah, and totally. like, that's what happened I to him. He I lost never his mind. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mushroom. Brazil, I was kind of in a safe place. Like they're like, who's this weird dude? You weren't in a safe place. No. You did, you did uh, put abducted. the GoPro down your underpants because you were told you were going to get uh, mugged or. Yes. Where was, yes. That? Where yeah. was that? The favelas. That was, um, yeah, I was at the bottom of, like at the bottom of the favelas. I went to see um the Rio carnival, they, like the, the carnival's coming up. So they, they all do like this practice for the carnival. There's all these different samba schools they're called mm. and they all sort of compete to get a chance to be in carnival and so I, I was invited to go at night time at 9 p.m to the rehearsal for this but it's in the streets of the favela so it's it's pretty dangerous but the the contact i had who was a lovely guy said like you can come there's kind of like an unwritten rule that no one robs anyone while it's happening like it's it's a safe place yeah. but i didn't realize that after after it stops it's back to you know <laughs> Yeah. robbing yeah. back to robbing uh, yeah. and so like I, yeah, I was I was filming and you know um, and it was great and then it ended the rehearsal and then I got a tug on my arm and it was this old lady 
and she was speaking to me in Portuguese and her friend was there as well. And they, she pulled me into this building and was like, speaking to me in Portuguese. So I was using uh, Google Translate to sort right. of talk back and forth. Yeah. Like I worked out that she was saying there's people out the front, they're waiting to rob you. No way. Yeah. So I was like in her place, in her house. And then, um, yeah, she just said, I'm going to book you a taxi. This is all like using Translate. <laughs> and you, and book you're like trying taxi. to secretly record this. <laughs> I, I actually thinking about the footage. film clip in the back of your mind. No, because I, I didn't stop. La, I, didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I was filming. I was actually filming the la 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 part when yeah. she came up to me oh and like God. grabbed me. And so I have like the audio because I didn't stop filming. So I have this whole interaction. <laughs> oh like, my sort of like God, yeah, audio. Jeez. But basically she booked me a cab and I walked just like and walked out the back of her house and, and got home. But I had the, the GoPro in my underpants just because I was worried oh, about losing the footage. No, but yeah. then you also thought that that could have been part. Of... I was worried that, yeah, this was whole part of like I was getting paranoid. Like, is this part of this massive like scam where they tell you you're in trouble, you're a tourist, and then they put you into the back of a cab and you never come home. But yeah, this is like she was just a lovely, lovely lady who saved me. Could have been like the Rubens banged up a broad edition, hey? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about, you know, we were saying before, you know, the incredible career you've had, and I'd like to touch on that by playing a game. So this game's called Memory Lane, right? So what myself and Jules has done, the lovely produ producer on this show, is we've gone through your gig history, right? Okay. And I'm going to pluck random ones out to see what you remember. Now, it doesn't need to be the actual gig. It can be like maybe the plane ride, maybe staying at a hotel, maybe the drive to, the drive back. I've got to say, before we even play this game, thank you for the effort because I'm actually looking forward to this. For the first time on a commercial radio show, I'm oh, looking yeah. forward to the game that you've prepared. Jules, we're putting this that in the promo. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work goes into it. No, All it's right. awesome. Okay, cool. So let's go back to uh, 2012 in Mackay. You played a festival, the River Sessions with... Everybody say We had the hoods. We had Xavier Rudd. We also had uh, Lady Hawk, Josh Pike, Sam Sultano. Okay. King Canyons, Closure Moscow, The Rubens. Any memory from the River Sessions in Mackay? I'm 2012. foggy. I'm real foggy. I, <laughs> you say 2012? Yeah, 2012. Did you say San Francisco? San Francisco. I remember being side of stage with some of the members from San Francisco before we were going on and kind of being a little bit starstruck because like, they'd blown up with... Um, da, 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 yeah, da, 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 yeah, yeah. They'd like the year before, or the, two years before, or something. They'd blown up with that song, and yeah. I was just like, "Why are we here?" <laughs> also, they gave us lanyards. <laughs> yeah. where, where can these things take us? <laughs> Do you remember the set at all? Do you remember what time you were on, roughly? Uh, oh, like two p.m. Maybe. Yeah, three p.m. One. I remember like cooking. I probably got sunburned. Yeah, I remember being. I mean, I don't remember the set, but I remember all that actual festival. But I could bet on the fact that we were terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> we, we hadn't learned how to play live. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We probably still didn't have guitar tuners and yeah, we're figuring things out, I reckon. They're the magic days, though, aren't they? When like everything's like new, you're like, whoa, we get a writer. We get like yeah, a slab yeah, of beer. Yeah. Like, this still is like crazy. That. Yeah. We yeah, still are. Yeah, yeah. That's probably yeah. why I don't remember anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I reckon you guys might remember this. We're going a year later, South by Southwest. <laughs> Geez, some big acts played this year, lads. 1975. Travis Scott as well. What? Chance, Jeez. Chance the rapper. Wow. Flume. Cold War Kids. Favorites like. I, I don't know what Third Eye Blind were doing there, and uh, yeah, Cold War Kids as well. So I South by Cold Southwest. Kids. Can you paint the picture for our listeners who have never been to well, like a conference like this overseas? It is massive, and we we were booked on the Warner stage just before Paramore, weren't we? Oh, we yeah. were. And I was, and like, what, and I was yeah. freaking out. Like, yeah. It was amazing. But, yeah, we were quite nervous, I think. It's yeah. pretty wild, the, the, those kind of things. I guess, like, before we went, we didn't know. I guess, you like, as a punter or, I guess, someone who's not in a band, you think South by Southwest is just like any other festival. Um, but it's not. It's a conference. And it's basically just, like, every single mini venue in all of Austin – puts on live music and you play like a 15 minute set and then you pick pack up and you leave and you play another set. Yeah. Mm. And so it's not like there's, there's big festival sort of stages around where massive acts play, but it really is just like this heaving monstrosity of just yeah. like up and coming undiscovered artists trying to sort of get discovered. Yeah. Um, so we played several different shows. Um, I don't remember any of them being the, 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 the big show we played was sick, but I remember it was just load ins and load outs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was this? Were you guys signed to Mushroom at this stage? We were with Mushroom, yeah, and then yeah. we were with Warner in the states. So oh, we played cool. on the Warner stage. Um, like Scotty was saying, when there was a band called Skaters before us, they were a really cool band oh, as well. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it was just like a wild experience. Like we'd never been there before to Texas and we're just eating tacos and yeah. so just taking it all in. Just good vibe. It was a termite's nest. It was just constant like bands wheeling. Dragging stuff amps. down the street. Yeah, I, remember, yeah, right. I remember again being starstruck, seeing Cold War kids and just being like, holy shit. Like who was, oh, what's his name? Um, was outside one of our shows and we were like, holy shit. He was in the beer garden when we played a show. Um, um, Foo Fighters. Girl. Oh, the drummer, that Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, oh, Taylor. Wow. Taylor was, yeah, outside one of our shows. Yeah. I don't think he came in, but we can say that he was... He might have heard the... That's where we were at the time, where we were just like, holy shit, there's a, a famous drummer outside our show. Yeah, that's cool, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, let's stay in the States, because you also did a festival with... Gotta testify, come up in the spot, look at extra fly. Governor's Ball, yeah. Kanye. Do you know about this one? Oh, Do you yeah. know what happened in this I got festival? no idea. No, got, you just picked this out without knowing what happened that year? I got no it idea. It was pouring rain, like, it was like and a windy. It was, oh my. When you guys were on it, did the whole thing get... Well, it, Kings, Kings of Leon got canned the first night, didn't they? Oh, yeah, no. things got pushed back yeah. and cancelled, and it's on an island in New York, like, in, in basically, and really hard to get to. It was knee-deep mud, <laughs> monsoonal rain, wind... And you and look forward to that so much, oh, right? Yeah, You're like, was, why this year? Why us? We still absolutely loved it. Like yeah, we played cool. our set, we had a great time. Um, <laughs> we kind of got stuck there, I think. What else happened? Uh, I think because it was over two days, so it's kind of like spread, like the experience. Like at, we played at like two p.m. again um, after the monsoon, and I remember like it was just like mud in front of us and kind yeah. of like a swamp kind of vibe it yeah. was just steamy and hot we saw kanye though right saw kanye yeah, west I, I, saw kendrick lamar saw kings of leon like it was the same kind of thing where it's like how are we what here? are we doing here yeah. seriously and watching those acts too like 2013 like they're good set lists Very, you know what i mean yeah. like they're all kind of killing it yeah around if you think about time, it it's before the set list got kind of shit yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peak. how yeah. was your tour schedule on a, on something like that was it like in and out every day or did you have a bit of time to kind of chill out and look around and i think we we're on on tour at that point yeah, i remember staying in manhattan um in the lower east side where we used to always stay and yeah just just getting i think our manager had her boyfriend had like a scooby wag scooby doo kind yeah. of van like stoner van that he drove <laughs> yeah. us out in his stoner van and we played our set and then we came back and just went out in the town yeah. it was it was we had some uh, mates that were over there at the same time our mate um oh, who, I know you. who stayed in my hotel crashed in my hotel one night because he one. didn't want to go back to his place and he slept in the bathtub and just threw up all over himself and so then decided to get rid of all of the his pillows and blankets that he had in the bathtub by throwing them out of the window onto the street in New York. Oh my god! Yeah, that's, <laughs> so that's that's what that's a, that's like the history of the band. It's like we're not the ones throwing shit out the window. It's, it's our, our friends. friends. It's your dodgy yeah. mates yeah. from camping. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to look after them, and bad things happen. Uh, I, I think I remember seeing footage from the show, but it looked great. Let's talk splendor. <laughs> so blur. <laughs> We had Tame 2, Pons. And uh, Mark Ronson, I think, was there too. Splendor. Does that what happen 2015? Because sometimes these aren't as yeah. accurate. Was it 2015? If it was 2015, it would have been the year that it was still inside. The main stage was inside the tent. Mm. No, the main the Mark Ronson was uh, main stage in the amphitheater, and it was after raining. Hoops. It was soaking. It How was. Do you remember your set? Jeez, all these big gigs are raining for you guys, eh? Hey? It wasn't raining for us. Nice. So that was when Sam went out on the boat. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so this is, this is like boat, po yeah. post hoops. Um, yeah. yeah, new venue when they moved to the big amphitheater, yeah. and yeah, went out on the boat, and it was a sea of people, probably thirty, forty thousand people, and one of the best sets of our lives. Yeah. The problem with these kind of shows where it's almost too good to be true is that you don't really enjoy it. Yeah, you're like, like worrying you're, about it and when you're in like the kind of mode. Out of body. Yeah. yeah. I feel like now I can enjoy those kind of situations much more. I've worked out how to like be present and like and just be like, we're lucky, this is sick. Let's just like make sure you take this in. But I don't yeah. remember a single moment of that set because I was nervous. And yeah, of course. It was too much. Yeah. Now people listening might not understand what you mean by the boat. Can you please explain? Yeah. Like yeah. I know what you're talking <laughs> about, but explain the process by, and what, what you did. It was, it was basically cool. just like a, a, yeah, I guess like during like a one album cycle of like two years of promoting a record and, and touring the record, I was crowd surfing, but then crowd surfing just seemed like it would be more fun with like an inflatable dinghy. So <laughs> we just took an inflatable dinghy around on tour with us. Um, you know, our manager, Greg, would have to like 
or, or Joel at the time would have to deflate mm-hmm. and then like they'd be side of stage like we'd start Passing the set and one of them just like blowing it up. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Seeing the future. Yeah. They didn't bring a pump. So <laughs> one, one of them's like, yeah, physically blowing up this dinghy so it would be ready for in time for like whatever song I would go out in the crowd. But Ever get punctured? No. Oh, no, it's a stir. So. I, think, I think we went through a lot. Like none of them made it to the next gig. Like that became a kind of a staple for a while where – we would have to go to a Kmart or a Big W or something and find airport. some in, inflatable thing before whatever show we we're going to play because yeah. now everyone expects it was like Sam to be an inflatable thing. And, yeah. 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 Oh, that's i got to bring that back. Yeah, we should bring yeah. that back. So, totally. It made it so easy. Yeah, I was going to say. You're have limbs and stuff going everywhere. Like, yeah. it's just like this nice thing. You just no, go out there with a book and relax. We're just keeping show. Repeating the chords. Did the boat come out for this? This would have been fun supporting Pink. Because yeah. uh, these were a lot of shows as well when you did this. Like, Pink is a phenomenon in Australia. Yeah. Like, that would have been, talk us through that. No boats. No, no boats. boats. No boats. Support um, band, there's no. No, there's none no, allowed. No. We, went on, we went on an after party boat with them, which was cool. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Yeah, they're an amazing crew. I think she does touring that level right, where she treats like crew artists everyone yeah. in her team uh like it's almost like she vets them and makes sure they're good people because mm-hmm. everyone you meet on the whole thing is just like a lovely person and yeah. it makes they make it a fun place to be yeah i just um, remember the food being incredible the food was incredible good catering. i was like good i was catering. like is it rude if i go back for thirds <laughs> 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 i was just getting more calorie intake <laughs> yeah it was funny because we were like you know every every city we went to we, we'd kind of like post up there for two weeks because she's playing like you know eight nine shows at rod laver so we're like in melbourne for two weeks and it's just funny being at the the point where you're going to Rod Laver every day and like saying hi to the security guard and walking through like your mates. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morning. Yeah, it's like you're going to work every day, but you're going to play a show. <laughs> yeah, 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 mm. totally. Um, and yeah, you got, we got comfortable and got to like explore different cities for yeah. the first time ever. So it was, it was sick. I was going to say, because you guys are like in and out, you know, most days, it must be nice to be in a place for a long time and to play arenas. Mm. Yeah. How yeah. cool. It was incredible. Uh, let's go one more because this is special. Play me this man. Oh, yeah. The Boss and Jimmy Hang too? Yeah. Hanging Rock and then we did one up in awesome. the winery up at Hope yeah. Hunter State Valley. Or something or Hunter Valley, yeah. Yeah, Hope, all, yeah. I think they, he did two tours. On the first one, we opened and then Jimmy Barnes and then The Boss. And yeah. then he came back for another tour the, the next year and we were the main support. That yeah. Year. So we were extremely lucky. What were those shows like? What was it like watching The Boss? They say, It's just incredible. Yeah. Just and and just so fit, like he, you know, he's playing for three and a half hours, and he's playing like a twenty-year-old, and just on the piano jamming. Like it was, it's unbelievable to watch. How was mm. Max on the sticks? Oh, incredible! Yeah. Always yeah. incredible. Yeah, it was. It was just like that was one of the first times we'd seen what it, the difference between someone who's kind of like an elite, immortal, rock and roll mm. god. Especially yeah, when they yeah, arrive yeah, in a helicopter. Playing bands, you know, like us, and just seeing, like, okay, like, I'll never be like that. That, like, I will, I could do everything I wanted to. I'll never be like that. And that's cool. Yeah. But it was just like, it was a whole different level. It was sick. Those support acts are so important to play with bands at that level because you learn something every time, I feel. Mm-hmm. That's, what was the one thing you watched from, like, the boss, for example, like the way he played and, like, his stage show? Oh, I don't know. I feel like. There's a lot that you could look at, like Sam saying, and say, okay, that's unattainable. That's unattainable. I think, like, maybe, you know, a commitment to just the show, yeah. I think, is yeah. probably something we took away from that. I like, think it's we. Joy as well. Just pure yeah. joy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, like, and we, something we learned, learned from Pink as well, like connecting to playing to that type of crowd, a big crowd, mm. connecting to people that are at the back of the room as well, which he does so well, which Pink awesome. does so well, which so many massive artists do so well. Whereas, like, we're used to playing, you know, smaller shows where you don't have to look up or look back to mm. to find those people in the back of the room. Yeah. Um, that was a real learning curve. Not for us, for, for Sam. Sam. Like, for we Sam. can do whatever we're going to do, but Sam. Yeah, I learned a lot playing with Pink. Yeah. After the first show, I think, I honestly think, like, we were subpar in terms of, like, playing to a stadium audience. Like, we, we hadn't Definitely. done that before, and I had to go out of my comfort zone a little bit and be like, how's everyone doing the bar? You know, do that stuff yeah. in our own way, but get comfortable. Yep. Mm. Those kind of tropes like are actually there for a reason. Like there's a reason why everyone does that stuff. And it's because you want to engage everyone from front to back. So yeah. like, there was stuff like that that we learned. I think like with the boss there, it was just, for me, it was just, he was just loving it. 
the yeah. whole time. He, yeah. Every, like he was smiling for three hours straight and having mm. a fucking awesome time. So yeah. trying to find that in what we do is, is key. You're right. When you play those bigger shows, it, a lot becomes about the banter, hey? <laughs> like your banter is going to be on point. You yeah. can't be subtle. You can't, yeah. you can't get away with like nuanced little like throwaway lines off the mic or banter between yeah. bandmates that's kind of like quiet like of you're course. in a club. You've got to be quite direct and just like mm. tell them what you want them to feel. Basically yeah. just like ask for a response, be really direct, yeah. get everyone really excited and then just get to the next song. That's it's a uh, bit of a, an art. Yeah, absolutely. What's... Um, out of all those shows and kind of looking back throughout your career, what is the one show where you've been hit up for the most guest list spots? Is it like a headline show somewhere at a big venue, maybe in Sydney or in Taylor Melbourne? Swift. Yeah, Taylor we Swift. Even supporting. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> we just we're just in the industry, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we just play guitar. Yeah. Uh, we should touch on that. How was Taylor? It was incredible. Um, yeah, I took my wife there and for, like as a Christmas gift. Yep. And so the girls at Mushroom really like hooked me up with some pretty incredible seats. Shout outs. Yeah. So thanks, Mushroom. Um, <laughs> Lauren. Um, but yeah, a bit of a moment for me was um, in the last song, I thought, oh, I start, I'll start filming, you know, the last song, get, get a bit of a vibe. And then I sort of turned to my right and Travis Kelsey was there. And no one was noticing him because yeah. every, it's the last song and they're just focused on um, Everyone's Taylor. Everyone's being respectful of Taylor. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just a bit obnoxious and things like that. So, <laughs> And I just, yeah, and he, he looked at me, gave me a signal and gave me a fist pump. So, no way. Uh, yeah, and then all these little Swifties were like, what the hell? And like just, <laughs> yeah, like they were losing their mind at me and I was like, oh, it was, it was, it was fun. Yeah, it was great. But it, it, yeah. incredible, incredible production, inc of like insane. But um. Yeah, it was it was a great night. Lots awesome. of lots of glitter. I went to a wedding the next day. I had to have three showers before, I, you know, I was you know presentable. Nice, <laughs> not sparkling anymore. Yeah. yeah, no, I got I really got into it. So yeah, awesome man. All right, well I got you guys here. I know we're running low on time, but I want to play one more game. On Triple M's homegrown with Matteo, it's time for. Uh oh. It's my party or dinner. Lovely jewels out there. So I'm going to play you three acts, right? This is called Right Party Dinner. Now, I need individual answers. So I'm going to give you three acts picked at random. One you've got to write a song with, the second you've got to party with, and the third you've got to take home for dinner. Okay. Right on first. Okay. So here we go. Silver Chair, your second act. Anybody find me? Queen and third act. So you're writing a song, you're partying, and the third you're taking oh. out to dinner with Silverchair Queen and Oasis. Oh Take my! It away. Oh my okay, God. right. So right, right, right. I would do. I would write with. Uh, like in terms of party, am I just like at an event and they're there too? Or are they are they there with me and we're we're having is, fun together? You can do whatever. You we're, we're having fun together. And Unlimited they like me. budget. Okay, cool. <laughs> they like so, me. <laughs> so right, right would be Queen. Okay, cool. Um, oh yeah, dinner would be. Oh, this is hard. Yeah, I don't really hard. want to have dinner with Silver Chair, but yeah. I'd party with Silver. <laughs> and they're all in their no, prime no, too, no. and they're all getting along. No, no, so. no. I reckon din dinner with, with Silver Chair and yeah. then party with Oasis. Okay, I like that. Right with Queen. You're right, my man. What are we doing? I'm partying with Silver Chair because I've seen them party before. Yeah, they I actually are yeah, loose. Yeah, they're yeah. loose. Right with Queen. Yeah. Nice. Uh, what was the last one? Dinner with Oasis. Dinner with Oasis. Oh, yeah. That's, okay. That's let's get you can kind of party <laughs> at dinner with Oasis or something. Well. The whole yeah. thing's a party, right? Yeah, <laughs> technically. Uh, one more, Al. Uh, okay. I Partying would, with Queen would be incredible. I would, I would party with Queen. Oh, okay, I like I'd it. write with Oasis because it would be easy and then we'd go party. You go to the pub. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We just do three chords yeah. and a beautiful chorus, done. <laughs> yeah. And then I'd uh, take... Silver chair to home for dinner. You're, we're essentially doing everything with everyone, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And, <laughs> and we're all together. So we're all together. Yeah. 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 Uh, lads, thanks so much for coming in. Uh, going for a talk down memory lane. All the new music, we're absolutely loving it. Uh, good friends of the show. Congrats on all your success. Looking forward to all the big news this year. And more importantly, just good to see you guys again. Thanks, thanks for having us, Matty. Thanks, thanks Matty. For all the latest rock news, interviews, and backstage experiences, don't forget to subscribe to Triple M Rock on the Listener app. Oh, hey, you just watched another Triple M homegrown highlight. So if you're not subscribed already, click on the buttons all around wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you're listening. And that way, when we get all the bands in, you're going to be the first to see the chats. You'll see them even before the bands. So don't miss a moment. Get our latest videos. Keep up to date with Triple M's homegrown and keep up to date with whatever's happening on Triple M.